أنا جوال رجعت لكم من البريك مشاهدينا برحب فيكم مجددا هذه الفكرة فكرة محد دبلوماسية مع سعادة سفير النمسا في لبنان السيد روني بول أمري صباح الخير صباح النور اكسلنسي امباسادور اوف اوستريا تو لبنان يور موست ويلكم هير ان اور بلاتفورم اوف مريم تي في فيرست الاو مي بليز تو كونفي اول ذا اونر فور هوستينغ يو اند هافينغ يو امونغ اس ثانك يو فور بينغ وذ اس اكسلنسي ثانك يو فيري ماتش فور انفايتينغ مي اتس بليجر تو بي هير ثانك يو اكسلنسي اف يو وونت تو جو باك تو يور ستي ان لبنان هاو لونغ هاف يو بين هير ان لبنان از ا دبلومات اند وات ار يور سبيسيفيك ثوتس اباوت اور كونتري ويل ذيس تايم اي ارايفد ان اون ذا فيرست اوف سبتمبر اوف لاست يير وذ ماي فاميلي بات ذيس از ماي فيرست تايم ان لبنان اي ليفد هير بيتوين 1978 اند 1982 سو فور مي اتس ا كامينغ باك It's uh, rediscovering the country. It's uh, meeting old friends. Mm -hmm. uh, we arrived at a very difficult moment, uh, of course. Um, there is no denying that uh, the situation isn't easy. Even when I compare it with those uh, difficult days during the civil war, uh, there are a lot of challenges ahead. The coming months, um, I'm afraid will uh, be a time of deterioration in this uh, <coughs> in this situation. Um, at the same time, the European Union is uh, is there to support Lebanon with humanitarian help, especially. Uh, and there is, however, another important aspect, which is the need to jumpstart the economy of Lebanon, and to jumpstart the economy. We are waiting for certain conditions to um, to take place in the country, which uh, have to do with <coughs> the formation of a government and uh, reforms. So these are going to be very important steps, so that your friends in the international community can once uh, again be there on your side and uh, um, bringing back the country to where it was previously. I will make uh, a very brief uh, translation, Excellency. وصلت إلى لبنان في واحد أيلول من العام الماضي والتقيت بالأصحاب والأصدقاء القدامى في في حين أنا كنت في فترة معينة من الزمن أعيش في لبنان وأتردد إلى لبنان. إنما الآن وصلنا في ظروف صعبة جدا والوضع صعب جدا في لبنان لجهة ما نواجهه. حاليا هناك العديد من الصعاب انما الاتحاد الاوروبي هو موجود هنا ليمد لبنان بالمساعدات الانسانيه وغيرها من الانسانيه your father was an ambassador that's right what can you tell us about your father well uh, the day we arrived uh, i still remember it uh, very well um, We arrived from Istanbul. My father used to be the general consul of Austria in Istanbul. Uh, we arrived uh, here at a very difficult time. Uh, we used to live in Ashrafiyeh, uh, close to Palais sur Soc. It was a time where Ashrafiyeh was facing um, a siege, practically. Um, we stayed there for about a year. I remember visiting the, uh, the lycée. Uh, close to our house. For how long have you been in Lebanon, uh, Excellency, before, as I said in my translation, that you used to come to Lebanon and you lived for uh, a certain period of time? Uh, for how long? For four years with an interruption of almost one year. Okay. So this is when we moved from Ashrafiyeh to, uh, to West Beirut, uh, mm -hmm. to, um, to Ras Beirut, more precisely. Mm -hmm. So uh, your father uh, was a general consul uh, in Istanbul, and uh, uh, then he came as an ambassador of uh, Austria to Lebanon, uh, uh, to Lebanon. And uh, you lived for uh, four years uh, almost uh, with some interruptions. That's right. Okay. Uh, Excellency, if you want to see the challenges uh, that you are facing uh, nowadays in your capacity as a diplomat, what can you tell us? Well, foremost, of course, is what happened on uh, 4th of August of last year. 
uh, when we arrived, we were very fortunate, uh, uh, much more fortunate than many Lebanese families who lost uh, friends, who lost family members, who lost their property. Um, in our case, luckily, it was just material damage. Uh, our embassy is close to the port, so is the residency. So the first uh, task I faced was uh, to uh, rebuild the, the embassy, uh, which uh, thanks to my very efficient team, we managed to do in a very short time. Um, Great damages in the embassy, excellent. We did, yes. We, uh, of course, we lost most of our windows. We also lost a few walls. Mm -hmm. But as I said, this is nothing uh, compared to what many Lebanese families have had to face. Um, another challenge, I would say, is uh, culture, uh, cultural work. As you know, Vienna is also known as the city of music, and uh, uh, cultural work in foreign countries is one of our um, is one of our strengths and mm -hmm. our mission. Uh, unfortunately, this has not been able. Uh, we w we have not been able to do this as we would have wished. Uh, but we did have uh, some online events, uh, about which I will tell you later on. And the third aspect, which uh, I think is new for the Austrian embassy here in Lebanon, is the humanitarian work. Mm -hmm. Of course, since many years, uh, Austria has been uh, helping Lebanon with uh, the refugees uh, coming from, from Syria and also the Palestinian refugees. <laughs> but what is new is uh, humanitarian work with the Lebanese population. So last year, for example, we were able to uh, mobilize 5 million euro uh, for the first time directed to, to projects with the uh, Lebanese population. Um, this is a continuing work, and this is not only something which comes from the government, uh, but I've had a lot of uh, NGOs, institutions, or, or also private persons who were concerned about uh, what they saw on television and who called us and asked for our assistance and asked what what can we do or what can I do uh, this to is help a Lebanon. great thanks and uh, this is a great uh, effort I think uh, this is a, it's a very good in uh, the humanitarian uh, field uh, thank you and uh, from here we can see the uh, very amazing and uh, important uh, bilateral relationship between Austria and Lebanon what can you tell us excellency well uh, you might see the badge that I have here on my jacket, which represents uh, our two flags, which are very similar. Both are red, white, and red. Uh, even if we have different symbols, we have the eagle and you have the cedar tree. Uh, there is a lot uh, that binds our two countries historically. Mm -hmm. uh, our diversity, our, uh, our culture, our uh, natural uh, patrimony, um, the hospitality of our people. This is our identity. And this is our too. exactly. This is our identity, and uh, and uh, this has not been forgotten in Austria. We have very strong relationships with uh, with Lebanon and with the Lebanese people. On um, on the commercial level, uh, historically we used to have also um, very strong exchanges. Of course, now with the crisis, uh, these things, uh, th this has become a little bit more difficult. We've seen a uh, fall in Lebanese exports to Austria by 66% last year, which is uh, considerable. Remarkable, which exactly. Which, of course, also has to do with, uh, with Corona and, of course, with the economic crisis. Uh, culturally, um, the work has gone on. Of course, uh, we've had to move to the to the virtual uh, to the virtual sector, uh, but we have um, we have organized concerts online. Uh, we have um, cooperation. Uh, thanks to high technology, Excellency. Thanks to the te <laughs> to technology, but also to the goodwill of uh, people. You have a lot of good people here uh, committing themselves who, who, who commit themselves to culture, mm -hmm. to music. And this is a very beautiful thing to, to discover. Exactly. And uh, if you want to go uh, and talk about the Austrian uh, battalion uh, deployed uh, in uh, southern Lebanon, what can you tell us? And you since when have uh, they been established there? Uh, you're making? referring to, to UNIFIL. Mm -hmm. uh, 
-hmm. what is not so known is that um, there is a second mission, which is called uh, UNZO, uh, which, is, uh, which has been uh, established in 1948 along the armistice line, where Austrian officers have uh, served since a very long time. And then, of course, there is UNIFIL, where we have um, a, a, com a, a contingent in uh, company size. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, right now 183 Austrians serving there. Uh, what is special about them is that this is... Uh, peacemakers. Peacemakers, <laughs> uh, peacekeepers. Peacekeepers. Um, uh, Thanks to them. Well, I think they are doing a great job and, mm -hmm. uh, and with a lot of dedication. I've been there myself in uh, October of last year. Uh, I've been able to see them at work. Uh, the special thing about the Austrians is that this is a logistics uh, unit, so they take care of uh, the refueling for the, uh, for the, um, for the cars. Uh, and uh, they, have, um, they have a fire department, uh, which is very useful, of course, in southern Lebanon, where in summer you're seeing a lot uh, drought and a lot of fires. Uh, when I was there, they were telling me that there was uh, okay. at least one or two cases where they had to um, go to the villages, uh, they helped to, to extinguish these fires, uh, and they're very efficient about this. So this is a... I think, uh, apart from the peacekeeping, a very nice aspect uh, exactly. about their work and uh, something that um, creates closeness with exactly. the population. Definitely. Uh, they are saving their lives and extinguishing uh, fires uh, <coughs> should the need arise, excuse me. <coughs> yes, and uh, we are very proud about what they are doing. Exactly. So I'm, uh, I will be visiting them again soon. I'm looking forward to that, and uh, if any of them are watching right now, I, I send them greetings. Our uh, warm greetings uh, to UN uh, Battalion Austrian uh, soldiers in south uh, of Lebanon. Uh, COVID-19, unfortunately, the pandemic that is skyrocketing uh, all over the world and uh, stopping the economic uh, rise, and uh, we are losing a lot of people. Uh, people are dying, uh, friends are disappearing, and uh, people are getting uh, sick and uh, more sick, unfortunately. Uh, how did Austria face and, uh, and did in order to rescue people from uh, COVID? If any laboratories uh, are settled uh, there in order uh, uh, to create or uh, to establish a safe inoculation for the population? What can you tell us, Excellency? I think uh, we can distinguish five aspects which uh, are important and uh, which we have learned about during this crisis. The first has to do um, with creating a conscience among the population. Each and every one of us is responsible for his own safety and for the safety of the people around him. Keeping social distance, as we are right now, wearing a mask if we are not, um, this has been the first task. This has been something that uh, we have been doing since uh, last spring and which has also helped to keep, uh, to keep the, um, the spread of the pandemic controlled uh, during the first wave. The second aspect um, is the flexibility about uh, regional application of measures. Uh, we need to look um, Controlled by ministries, you mean? Co controlled. In Austria, we have, uh, we have the federal state. So in, in each federal state and in every uh, town and community of Austria, um, we, uh, we watch very closely how uh, the, the uh, pand pandemic unfolds. And uh, when there is a need, uh, we have supplementary measures which are implemented there. And I think this has been important also to differentiate uh, between um, places where you've had less incidents and where there is no reason to exaggerate uh, when, when you're applying uh, measures. In and strict measures. Exactly, because this has psychological effects. It has effects on, on the health of people uh, when they're locked up at home. Uh, this is not what we want. Uh, you need to differentiate uh, between places where it is uh, urgently needed and places where it isn't. 
Uh, places One. where there is a lot of congestion, uh, strict measures are applied. This is what you mean, Excellency? Yes. Uh, if, we, if we see that there is a spread of cases, and now, of course, we also have the mutations, which we have to look at very closely, uh, especially the British mu mutation in Austria. Um, this is the second point. The third point uh, has a lot to do with this. How do we, how do we see if there, are, uh, if there are many cases? Uh, in a place. We have to be very thorough about testing. Mm -hmm. uh, my sister is a school teacher, so I, I know this uh, very well, also through her. Uh, her kids are being tested three times a week. Amazing. So the, the kids are going to school, uh, but uh, we are very thorough about testing. And this is very good wi um, in filtering out uh, those uh, the cases of, of, of contagion and this has made it also possible to be more proactive about opening up again. Uh, so I can understand from your excellencies uh, that uh, schools are uh, or have been always open? No they haven't. Uh, we've had homeschooling of course like in Lebanon uh, but we've also had very long phases of uh, uh, mixed schooling so um, children being at home a part of the week on and, and at school um, uh, during other times. And actually now, like in Lebanon, you are going to, to open up again. In Austria, we are also doing this right now. So we are seeing, uh, we are seeing the third wave, which is getting a little bit more uh, controlled with less cases. Um, number four, of course, and very important, is uh, the efficiency of uh, vaccination. Mm -hmm. uh, here we are... We really have to thank also the European Commission uh, w that has been very uh, successful in negotiating with Pfizer. Mm -hmm. So we, have, uh, we are receiving a lot more Pfizer vaccinations than we expected a short time ago and we will be able to offer vaccinations to anyone who would like to be vaccinated up to the end of June. So this is the good news. We also have 2.7 out of 9 million uh, Austrians, we have 2.7 million who've already at least received a first vaccine. Uh, so uh, supposedly we can uh, say that or expect that end of June uh, the inoculation uh, will be, uh, you will be done with the, the vaccination uh, in Austria for the whole population? For those who would like it. Uh, we, we're not forcing anyone. And this I think is also important um, to maintain guarantees and liberties. Uh, we have to find a balance between uh, security with uh, situations uh, like COVID and um, the liberties uh, which we are used to. So to come to the fifth aspect, which is no less important and will be ver very important in the future, um, the economic aspect. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've had uh, 22.5 billion uh, deficit through the corona crisis this is um, this is quite uh, a, a big number uh, dramatically dramatic uh, people have lost their jobs so here it's been important also to implement measures and what has been done is to um, to uh, use a model of uh, working for shorter time but paying people 80 percent of their salary and here the state has stepped in and is paying a part of the salary in order for people not uh, to lose their jobs. And uh, this has also, of course, helped a lot of families. Uh, and the very, very uh, tiny and small, uh, uh, some minutes remaining, uh, what are uh, the future uh, projects of your uh, embassy, uh, the embassy of Austria in Lebanon? Well, as I've mentioned, we've had a very nice um, uh, concert with the Stratos uh, Quartet. Uh, in October of last year. Uh, this has been the starting point for a bigger project with uh, the Conservatoire and the Musicale de Baghdad. Uh, we are um, uh, planning to, s to, to have an MOU between uh, the Austrian um, University of Music and Performing Arts and uh, the Conservatoire. Uh, we are offering uh, online um, courses for, for uh, young musicians and uh, the end point of this should be once we've reopened and we, have, uh, we can have musicians coming to Lebanon once again to have a <coughs> concert together with Austrian musicians 
and these uh, young Lebanese uh, musicians together. We just need this ambiance. Absolutely, and I think there is nothing uh, that can replace the, uh, you know, the personal experience of being in a concert. So this is one thing, uh, <coughs> of course, uh, and th this is where we come back to the explosion last year. Uh, we, we feel a very strong s solidarity with uh, uh, Lebanese diplomats, so we are offering a course um, of the Diplomatic Academy uh, together with uh, young Lebanese diplomats. Uh, we are planning a film about Austrians in, uh, in Lebanon with Carmen Labaki. This is another project for this year. And what we are also uh, discussing is um, to make cultural uh, culture walks, uh, walks which are dedicated to architecture. And uh, I will be meeting uh, tomorrow um, the director of uh, Biladi, and we will be discussing this. For best uh, future endeavors, uh, very good luck, uh, Excellency Ambassador uh, of Austria to Lebanon. Uh, thank you for being uh, our host today. Thank you, Joel. Thank you. مشاهدينا بريك وبرجع لكم